On May 25, 2022, the State Council, led by the Chinese Premier, held an emergency meeting entitled the National Teleconference on Stabilizing the Economy. Chaired by Chinese Premier Li Keqiang, the meeting was attended by high-level Communist Party figures such as the Politburo Standing Committee, Vice Premier Han Zhang, three Politburo members, and four state councillors. To the shock of the world, more than 100,000 officials attended the meeting. Branch venues were set up in provinces, cities, and counties across the country, and leaders at all levels participated. On June 3rd, the Wall Street Journal quoted informed sources close to the CCP's decision-making hierarchy as saying that Li Keqiang's 100,000-strong conference was submitted to the Politburo Standing Committee for approval. As other CCP leaders expressed concern about economic issues, Xi Jinping gave in to the idea after Li Keqiang's proposal was supported by other standing committee members. At the meeting, Li said in a grave tone that was rarely seen that the current economic situation in China is, to some extent, worse than it was when it was hit hard by the epidemic in 2020. He asked the localities to come up with all the policies they can to help the enterprises, meaning to use whatever means to support the businesses. People familiar with the matter told Bloomberg that Li Keqiang said bluntly at the meeting that China's economic growth is at risk of slipping out of the reasonable zone. If the economy fails to maintain a certain growth rate, he said it will pay a huge price and face a long road to recovery. Premier Li demanded that growth in the second quarter must be positive. The May 25th meeting sent a clear message, both in terms of its size and scale, that China's economy is getting too depressed to be ignored. However, the Communist Party's official media collectively handled the national video conference in a low-key manner, apparently not wanting to scare the Chinese public at the moment. China's economy has been slowing down due to a number of factors. In the first two years of the COVID-19 pandemic, the embargo has left less money in consumers' pockets. The war in Ukraine has added to the problem, bringing ballooning energy costs, high commodity prices, increased manufacturing costs, and supply chain disruptions. In March, Li Keqiang's government work report set an annual economic growth target of around 5.5% for 2022. JP Morgan and UBS have lowered their growth estimates for China to around 3%, and Bloomberg even predicts GDP growth of only 2% for the year. Chinese people are feeling the stress on the economy, and consumer spending is falling across the board. A clear indication of this is that mortgage lending in China is falling sharply, and overall lending has fallen to a five-year low. Chinese banks made about half as many loans in April as they did in March. There is also bad news for the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP. In an effort to combat an already high inflation rate of 8.5%, the U.S. Federal Reserve raised interest rates by 0.5 percentage points on May 4th. Prior to that, the Fed had raised its credit prime rate by 0.25% in mid-March. It was the first increase since 2000. Fed Chairman Jerome Powell said at a May 4th press conference that there could be multiple 50 basis point rate hikes in the coming months. Higher interest rates in the U.S. would also draw foreign investment away from China, which would weaken the Chinese renminbi. A stronger dollar and a weaker renminbi will make it harder for the Communist Party to service its foreign debt, which is mostly in U.S. dollars. Chinese companies will also be affected, as about a quarter of China's corporate debt is in U.S. dollars. Despite the Communist Party's expertise in covering up, more details are being revealed about the actual state of China's economy. According to several media reports in China, civil servants in Shenzhen, one of China's richest first-tier cities, took another significant pay cut in May. It was said to be reduced to below 24,000 US dollars a year. Previously, the average annual salary of civil servants in Shenzhen was about 40,000 to 50,000 dollars. People bought houses based on their income level at the time. At the current rate of pay cuts, many public servants won't be able to repay their home loans. A Shenzhen resident posted online that he received a notice from his company. It reads, I voluntarily lower my monthly salary effective May 2022. If not, the reason is, it requires the employee to fill in the reduced salary figure or give a reason for not wanting to reduce the salary. As a matter of fact, civil servants across China have already reduced their salaries by an average of 20% in 2021. 
Like Shanghai, Shenzhen is one of the cities with the highest fiscal revenues in China. The fact that civil servants in Shenzhen have suffered a pay cut of this magnitude indicates that both the central and local finances are in serious trouble. They are really out of money. According to the official data released by China in April 2022, the Chinese state revenue was about RMB 1.2 trillion, a decrease of 41.3% compared to the same period of the previous year. Among them, tax revenue dropped sharply by 47.3% year-on-year. At the May 25th meeting of 100,000 officials, Premier Li also somewhat revealed China's true financial situation. He said several provinces have already requested approval for emergency bond issuance to tide over the difficulties. The downturn in the local economy has also hit the central government's fiscal revenue, seriously affecting the government's overall tax revenue stream. Li Keqiang said the central government doesn't have any extra funds except a general reserve meant for a major natural disaster. Local governments have to rely on their own for the rest of the money. Consumption is the number one driver of economic growth. From January to April 2022, among the 18 cities that have released data, there have been 8 cities with negative growth in total retail sales of consumer goods. Among which, Shanghai and Suzhou rank the top two on the list of declines, with growth rates of negative 14.2% and negative 7.5% respectively. The 2021 China Pension Outlook Survey report released by Fidelity International also shows that the savings ratio of the younger generation, age 18 to 34, is on the rise, with the average monthly savings amount of RMB 1,624 and the savings rate hitting a new high since 2018. When Chinese people have no money in hand and no spending power, they don't visit brick-and-mortar stores and have started to stop visiting online stores as well. People don't spend money online and they have a growing confidence crisis. This can be seen in the current performance of Chinese internet companies. In 2021, Chinese technology companies experienced a regulatory storm from the communist authorities, and the total market value of these companies has evaporated by a cumulative 1.5 trillion US dollars in the past year or so. More than three dozen companies, including Alibaba, Tencent, and Baidu, have been put on the list of companies subject to fines. From February to May 2022, there were rumors of the fiercest ever wave of layoffs at China's internet giants. It was revealed that two internet powerhouses, Tencent and Alibaba, have undergone major layoffs, one by 15% and the other by 30%. ByteDance has eliminated all of its innovative business units. In June, Jihu, a Quora-like Chinese social Q&A site, increased its scope of layoffs, sweeping through almost all of its business units. It's expected they will let go over 30% of its employees on average, and even up to 60% in some departments. One Tencent employee wrote on social media, After a huge pay cut and massive layoffs, the company's internal atmosphere has begun to change. From the department heads to the employees, they are taking the attitude of Bailan. The working hours seem to be longer, but productivity and real output have fallen. Bai lan is a new popular term on the Chinese internet these days, meaning to let it rot, to voluntarily give up on goals and pursuits and no longer care. Many people working in the internet industry have lost their jobs, and they are just one offshoot of China's unemployed force. China's National Bureau of Statistics reported that in April, the unemployment rate for young people between the ages of 16 and 24 reached 18.2%, which means that roughly one out of every five young people is unemployed. This summer, China will see a record number of college graduates of over 10 million. Without a doubt, it will push up the unemployment rate further. On May 30th, Yi Tsai, a media in China, published a report that Shandong province was recruiting for 30 staff openings and the number of applicants exceeded 4,000. In Wuhan, the ratio of applications for a marriage registration office in a district civil affairs bureau reached 400 to 1. In response to the arrival of the unemployment wave, the CCP's official rhetoric has channeled the public's anger towards capitalists stirring up conflicts between employees and employers. It suggests to the public that they have lost their jobs because of the greed of the capitalists. In China's increasingly left-leaning atmosphere, big bosses have become unusually low-profile.
On May 21st, Ma Hua Tong, chairman of Tencent, whose company owns China's largest social networking platform, WeChat, sparked an internet storm when he made a rare move to share an online article. The content, quoted by him, read, The way some people care about the economy is that an enterprise can go bankrupt, but it can't lay off employees. An enterprise can go bankrupt, but it can't make people work overtime. As for what is meant by the Chinese economy, they don't understand and don't care. If their takeout order is 10 minutes late, they will swear and curse the delivery workers harshly. Some scholars have commented, Ma Hua Tong speaks online is equivalent to a mute talking, basically. And even if the mute is talking, that means that something big is going terribly wrong. However, soon the speech of Tencent's boss was blocked. The reason is, this content cannot be viewed due to violations. It's important to note that much of the data we cite is from official CCP data, which is often carefully reworked. The reality is usually much worse. The CCP knows it better than anyone. On May 30th, 2022, China's National Bureau of Statistics held a video conference on the topic of statistical fraud and the mobilization and deployment of special efforts to combat the problem. On May 31st, one provincial-level party official was announced to be guilty of falsifying economic data to seek personal advancement. This charge is rare among fallen officials. On May 30th, China's official media, People.cn, reported that several cities in three provinces have been called out for statistical falsification, and 126 individuals responsible have been identified and disciplined. Why is the CCP now making a concerted effort to crack down on statistical falsification? One possibility is that China's economic crisis can no longer be covered up. It's time to psychologically prepare the public, hinting at rhetoric that local data has been falsified by local governments, and that fake data has misled the central government in making policies. The next step would be to let the public know that China's economic situation is far worse than imagined. Homes are the biggest asset for ordinary Chinese. Moreover, they are deeply tied up in China's economy and the wealth of Chinese families. One professor from China's Central University of Finance and Economics posted on Weibo in January 2022. He said, after obtaining an inside source, that the wave of foreclosure is coming. 200,000 homeowners are being sued by the four major banks for abandoning their homes and missing payments just as 2022 began. He also shared an article by an attorney. The attorney said, The number of foreclosures is really high, and lawyers are exhausted from sending out legal notices. When the economy is down and individuals have lower incomes or lost their jobs, abandoning their homes and defaulting on mortgages is a reluctant choice for those who own them. From January 2022 up to now, the economy is getting worse, and the CCP is getting rather nervous as China's economy is about to flame out. That's why there was a meeting of 100,000 officials on May 25th. According to the meeting, the policies identified in the Central Economic Work Conference and the government's work report should be largely executed in the first half of the year. On May 23rd, the State Council launched 33 measures covering fiscal and monetary policies, stabilizing the supply chain and the industrial chain, as well as six aspects of consumption, investment, energy security, and safeguarding basic livelihoods. Unfortunately, these economic policies are virtually impossible to implement in reality. For example, fiscal policy includes the implementation of corporate tax rebates, tax reduction efforts, and allowing enterprises to defer payment of social insurance premiums. However, the current challenge is, where else can local governments scrounge for money? All along, China's local finances have been supported by selling land, but China's current real estate industry has been in an extreme downturn. Governments at all levels which rely heavily on land finance are having a hard time generating revenue to stabilize the economy after two years of epidemics. In general, ordinary people and local officials at the low level don't have the nerve to tell the truth. On May 19th, Li Keqiang met with local truck drivers in Yunnan province in southwest China. No matter how much he tried to lead them, they didn't dare to voice their grievances. <laughs>
You gave clever answers. You didn't say that the tax was reasonable or not. You answer by saying that I will pay as much as I am required to pay. I am a law-abiding citizen. Perhaps people at the bottom of society in China don't believe that the premier can really help them solve problems, and that saying the wrong thing would bring them trouble. Finally, Premier Li offered to help. Let's go back and look into it in detail so that our state-owned enterprises can help you tide over the difficulties. See if banks can hold off on your loan payments for a while. It'll give us a chance to catch our breath. Not to lower the debt, but to delay the repayment. Will it help? Yes, yes. Delay the payment for three months to half a year. Okay, okay. To boost domestic consumption, the People's Bank of China is expected to cut interest rates to encourage borrowing and consumption. The Chinese government is using various means to stimulate consumption. The consumption subsidy policy is quite favorable this time. It's rare to see 15% off promotion for electronic products. Customers now enjoy subsidy policies issued by the central government and also the provincial government, as well as the sales promotion we offered at the same time. The purpose is to ensure customers can buy cars at better prices. On May 23rd, China's central bank and CBIRC, the China Banking and Insurance Regulatory Commission, held a joint meeting to analyze the monetary and credit situation. They asked the major banks to increase their loan allocation. However, the biggest difficulty for banks is the lack of demand from enterprises. In fact, as early as March 2022, the Chinese government announced that its fiscal spending would be expanded by more than 2 trillion RMB, or more than US 300 billion compared to last year. Meanwhile, about 560 billion US dollars of special bonds for local governments have been arranged. Since the second half of 2021, the deployment of special government bonds has accelerated from the central to local levels. About 50% of government bonds in 2021 were directed towards transportation infrastructure and sectors of the municipal and industrial park infrastructure. However, up to now, the macro control instruments used by the CCP, be it monetary or fiscal policies, have failed to stimulate the economy. The most important reason, in our opinion, is the collapse of market confidence, which is the most crucial element supporting a market economy. The instability and unpredictability of the CCP's policies have bankrupted the credibility of the CCP government. The, the more than 10 buses have left. Basically everything has been moved out of the Foxconn factory. There's no one anymore. At the meeting of 100,000 officials, China's premier didn't dare to oppose the CCP's zero-COVID policy, let alone indicate how damaging it is to the economy. So far, the top echelon of the CCP seems to have reached some kind of compromise, insisting on a zero-COVID policy while trying to resolve economic issues, insisting on Xi Jinping's leadership while supporting the premier's economic decisions. Sources believe that if the COVID-19 outbreak flares up again, China is likely to have another lockdown. My shop was doing very well at the time pre-pandemic. We have many customers every day, and the amount of business we were getting was enough for us to survive. But affected by the epidemic, we couldn't survive. I asked a lot of our friends, and many stores will close too, because not many stores can survive the epidemic for two to three months without any income. It can be predicted that the CCP is being forced to adjust its directions in the face of the severe economic situation and will further loosen its control over the real estate market, the capital market, and the large Chinese internet corporations in the future. But the Chinese public has lost confidence in the market. At the same time, the Communist Party's stringent industry regulations and Dynamic Zero anti-epidemic policies have sent the expectations and confidence of entrepreneurs to the bottom. Now China's young people, employees and business owners are coping with the future by taking on the attitude of Tong Ping, or even Bai Lan, which is lying flat or even letting it rot in English. 
The market economy relies on confidence and credibility. If consumers and investors alike aren't optimistic about the future and distrust the government, then no matter how many incentives the government introduces, it may work in the short term. But in the long term, it won't be easy to dispel the market's doubts. As the Chinese communist system itself reaches the year 2022, the world and the local public have come to see its inherent flaws, and their confidence in the communist party will never return to what it once was. So, this is the current dilemma of Chinese Premier Li Keqiang. He is like a fire chief in the face of a raging fire, with no water left in the hose.